Hello and welcome to Aspects of Writing. I'm your host, James Kelly, and my co-host is Janet Corsi. Our guest for today's show is Mimi Emmanuel. Uh, Mimi is joining us from Australia, and the topic of the show is Your Story is Your Legacy. You were named after your maternal grandmother, Wilhelmina Helena Paulina Maria, <laughs> uh, and she was the Queen of the Netherlands, is that correct, in 1890 That's until correct. her, oh, yeah. wow, okay, That's, That's an cool. interesting past. Mm-hmm. Well, then Mimi's mom and dad owned a beach kiosk in Holland along the North Sea. You have two brothers and two sisters. Are you still married to a doctor? Uh, no, no. At the moment, I'm single. Okay, but you were married to a doctor. You have two I daughters. Do yes. you still have the two puppies? Yes. Okay, and you have a godson, yes. and you also wrote a book that you dedicated to your godson. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, and your book, My Story of Survival, was listed as number one on Amazon's best-selling list for over ten months. You also wrote How to Launch Your Ebook. Um, easy, easy peasy, easy. which was also a number one bestseller, and you've had several other bestsellers. So, in addition, mm-hmm. you have um, you want to tell us about? I, I'm curious about something you wrote about a diet. Give us an idea about. Tell us about your food diet. Okay, that's that's sort of where it all started. I um, I had a period where I wasn't very well at all. I, actually, I ruptured my appendix. Oh. They didn't take it out. I couldn't tolerate uh, any food at all. I barely could keep down water and so over a period of time we trialed and tested and for five years I lived on 10 ingredients only and uh, after those five years I slowly started to improve my health improved because my gut just couldn't tolerate anything after my appendix ruptured um, and then after a little while after feeling very sorry for myself living in my bedroom for near enough a decade um, I got this message coming to me that I should get out and do something and help some folk. And I go, what? I'm, you know, I need help. But that wasn't the mes- message I was hearing. I was hearing I should go out and help some people. So I didn't know what to do, really, because I still was quite intolerant to sound and, you know, light and all that. So from my bedroom, on my recliner chair, I wrote, the book My Story of Survival, which lists the ten ingredients okay. that kept me going for a period of five years. What were some of those ingredients? Um, if I tell you all, no <laughs> one will buy the book, so I won't <laughs> tell you all. All right, that's fair. <laughs> but I'll tell I'll tell you some. Okay. Um, p- part of the diet was green beans. It was sweet potato. It was yogurt. It was apple. It was fig. And interestingly enough, later on, when I googled all these ingredients, I discovered they're kind of like superfoods, particularly the sweet potato. You could pretty much live on sweet potato for a year if you had to. Really? Uh-huh. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes. Uh, there's actually in the book, it's mentioned uh, one particular guy, he, le- he lived for a whole year on ordinary potatoes, and, and he improved his health quite significantly by wow. doing so. Wow. Yeah. So uh, that's really quite interesting to think that that's possible. I wasn't aware of that. I just knew I had all these intolerances. I couldn't tolerate dairy, like, you know. Yeah, you were gen, lactose intolerant. You name yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all that. Um, but so that it worked really well. And so I decided to write a book about it. I thought if I just help one person, um, that would be good. You know, if one person can benefit from this. And as it turned out, quite a few people benefited from it. Oh, good. And then after that, I... I became so um, grateful to the people that helped me publish this book because it became a bestseller. It was a bestseller, I don't know, in like 10 categories or something mm-hmm. in Amazon, number one bestseller. I go, whoa, thank you to my launch team. Yeah. And so all the people that had helped me get it out, when I say help me get it out, what they did, um, they posted the launch on their Facebook page. Or they would download a copy and re, uh, post a review. Or they would help me with proofreading or a beta reading and give feedback. Uh, any of those things, you know, they would share it on Twitter, um, anything like that. The, the, those people I call, you know, my launch team. Mm-hmm. And they said, Mimi, but how did it become a bestseller? I go, I don't know. I've never done this before. But you know what? I'll write up what I did. And so you can copy what I did and it should work for you too. 
And so I did, and I wrote Mimi's book launch plan, and that was a, a diary of what I did for launch, 30 days, you know, step by step, this is what I did, this is what I did. And then I um, stuck a lot of fun facts in there as well. And so that's how the second one came about, just simply for my launch team to say, thank you for helping me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's all very okay. interesting. Yes, so so I, I was really, I was just, because I had been so ill for such a long time, I just literally only been in my bedroom, I hadn't met any people, and that was the other thing, people said, but how did you do that, how did you get a launch team, and I go, well, that's really surprising, isn't it, because um, indeed, I didn't know anyone, after 10 years, you can imagine, not many friends are sticking around, right. you know, if someone isn't able to get up, you're pretty isolated, I prayed a lot, so that's, you know, I believe I got a lot of help from that. I've got great faith. And then um, I also joined a school on how to publish, and I, I got a tremendous amount of help from them and a lot of guidance. And so all my buddies that I studied with, um, they were my support team. And what actually happened during the very first launch of the book the very day that the book launched, the very hour the book launched, a car in my neighborhood took out an electric pole <laughs> that got the whole internet in the whole town down. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my goodness. So <clears throat> at, at six o'clock was the launch and we are sitting behind our keyboard, my daughter and I, to share the launch, saying to people, hey, the book is launched, get a copy, write a review, share it with your friends, all that. And boom, the internet went out. <laughs> and so I couldn't contact anyone at all. And I go, well, what's the chances of something like this happening? But because I was part of a community, I told one of the people there, I was able to get hold of them. And I said, guess what happened? I can't do anything. And they said, no worries, we'll pass it on. And so this whole wonderful, beautiful network of people, they all got into action. And I think that was sort of my lucky day. They all shared it around way more than probably had happened otherwise. Uh huh. And yes, and that's how I think that book became a great success. The other thing with that first book was also it fitted a lot of categories in Amazon. If you think, for instance, people think, yeah, but what's a category on Amazon? It's very, very important. If you think you go to a bookshop, where, what shelf does your book sit on? Right. Now, if you have a travel book, it goes on the travel shelf, right? Well, that's a category on Amazon. Now, this particular, my first book, fitted like 10 or 12 categories because it was in health, it was in well-being, it was in gut problems, it was in... Uh, Spirituality. You know, medical... Yeah, it had a lot of issues, uh, a lot of not issues, uh, categories. Right. Um, so, it fitted on a lot of bookshelves. And you can't do that all in one go. You, you ask Amazon, you say, can you please, if you don't ask Amazon, they'll just put it somewhere. But mm -hmm. if you ask Amazon and you say, can you put it on this bookshelf? Can you put it on this bookshelf? And you can only do like three or four at a time. Or, or when I launched two years ago, that was the case. I think right now you can possibly put it in 10 cat categories at once. Okay. Wow. And so, so all... Uh, all different people would see the book. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah that so yeah. that that's an important um, point to, to to let people know about is that you know know what your book's about. Um, know where where it can be categorized. I mean, I mm. I just had to do that with um, the book that you just saw yesterday that came out. You know, um, yeah. it it is a science fiction book, but it does deal with theology and it does deal with creationism um in that respect mm -hmm. and it also deals with darwinism so you know and aliens uh it sounds yeah. crazy <laughs> but it does deal with all those topics yeah. so yes. you know it, you, it's not just a science fiction novel no so so you see you are now appealing to you just mentioned four or five different audiences and and that's how your book then gets spread widely on Amazon and, and other book sites. And I think that's a really good um, marketing ploy, if you like. like. I didn't set out to do that at all. It just so happened that my book fitted many categories. That is not always the case. But with your book also, you probably didn't set out to do that either. Um, but it's great because when your book 
uh, gets published, there'll be many different audiences exposed to it, and so the reach will be far and wide. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I totally agree with you, and that is part of what I tra- plan to do is strategize in that regard. In fact, what I plan to do, and you can tell me if I'm right or wrong, I'll always send little uh, sound bites out over the social media, but I may put one out that deals with aliens, and then I may put one out that deals with theology. You know, each one, mm. when I do it on different yeah. days, will target a different audience because it truly mm. has all those elements in it. So it's not misleading mm. anyone. There really are quotes in there from the Bible. There really is the whole thing about Darwinism. All that's mm. in there about Area 51, and I'm sure you've heard of Area 51. Um, you know, the yeah. whole UFO thing. So, you know, yes. but each day you don't have to target one specific audience. Like you said, I don't have to just say it's science fiction and leave it at that. Mm. Mm. That's right. And so, and, and that's really interesting. If you, you see, there's nothing wrong either with having a very uh, small niche. There's nothing wrong with that either. For instance, some people, like here in in Australia, the grey nomads, they just come to mind. And these are people that are retired and they sell up and they go travel. And and that's sort of, if you like, a narrow niche, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. So it, it would be good to target to them, you know, if, if, if someone wanted to write a book to them, you could tra- target to them. And it would only be grey nomads. It wouldn't be much, or it would be travel, I guess, travel and adventure, grey nomads, but it would be quite a narrow niche. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But so it's, it's just interesting to be aware of that. Uh, you don't necessarily even have to strategize about it. You just need to be aware. What's your niche? What's your audience? What bookshelf? What category will you place it on? And then you can, of course, research the categories. And some categories have like 2,000 books in them. But other categories may have 10,000 books in them. And then you think, well, which category um, is my book? most likely to be noticed in is that the 2,000 or the 10,000 books mm-hmm. it's more likely to be noticed in the 2,000 yes uh, exactly category. yeah yeah that's right so you have to do your research you have to know how to do your research and you know and you that, but sometimes you don't know who your audience is until I do I did a, like a little test market on a book that uh, just came out about three weeks ago um, we wrote a children's book called the purple caterpillar and yes, I saw that. Yeah, it and th- yeah. absolutely lovely. Oh, thank you. And that book really deals with being a bully. It has mm. lessons in there about listening to what you're being taught, whether it be from a parent or a teacher. Um, mm-hmm. It has all these little lessons in there. So that's another thing is trying to figure out, you know, what is a parent trying? Because there's a lot of children's books out there, but parents mm. usually want to try and find something that has a message behind it. That's, that's right. going to teach their child something. So, you know, right. we're going to be doing that book the same way. We're going to try and target different audiences in that regard for children's books. Uh, you see, and that book, for instance, would be a really good fit for the homeschooling category because homeschoolers are always looking for books to educate their children. Yes. And that book would be a great book to place on the Teachers Pay Teacher website. Um, that's a website that is for educational materials for teachers. Um, and so there is a whole range of um, yeah, possibilities as to where to place that. Maybe I'll have to oh, h- yeah. hire you as my marketing director. Well, I was just going to say our topic today is uh, your story is your legacy and with Mimi Emmanuel, and um, you're joining us from Australia. And Mimi, I wanted you to talk a little bit about h- how your story is your legacy. Right. This is interesting in that I didn't really get to that till this particular book, Live Your Best Life, which is my last book, uh, by writing your own eulogy. But all the while, obviously, as I wrote my story of survival, as I wrote Mimi's book launch plan, Uh, followed by God Healed Me and the Holy Grail. With all those books, I was creating a legacy. Um, And at some stage I came to that and I thought it's really important to be aware of that because as opposed to just quickly getting a book out because you want to be an author, if you know you're creating a legacy, if you realize that this book is going to be on Amazon or 
you know, any of those book sites, like forever, near enough, um, you want to do a good job. Yeah. And, and it is important to think about why you're doing it. That's the first step. Why are you doing this? Are you publishing because you just want to write? Are you publishing because you want to leave a legacy to your children? Are you publishing because you have something to share with, you know, a, a bigger audience? Are you publishing because it is part of a business and you want to get the message out there for your business? And really, you should get that in your head before you get even writing. Right. And Knowing your passion. That, yeah. That's right. Know your passion. And that comes back to that you're creating a legacy. And so in Live Your Best Life, I say write your own eulogy. Imagine standing at your grave and then think, like, what are they saying about me? And that actually really happened to me because as I ruptured my appendix and they wouldn't take it out because they thought I would die if they took it out because by then I'd septicemia, I was intolerant to antibiotics, etc. Mm. So it really looked like I was going to die. And my mind went to my um, to my lingerie drawer at home and I thought oh no people are gonna <laughs> be rifling through that and I thought oh how awful <laughs> but what, a dread, what a dreadful thought to have and I thought has my life come to this <laughs> that at the end of my life that's what I think about right. <laughs> right you don't think about what they're really going to be talking about yeah it's yeah. funny how we think that way yeah, yeah. That was a really good wake-up call for me. I thought, no, what are people going to say about me? That, that you know, I have to leave something behind that is better than, you know, how I came into the world. And and then I started working on that. And that obviously is different for all of us. It doesn't mean you necessarily have to write a book. You know, lots of people will never write a book. But when you write a book, when you're a writer, then I think to have that in the back of your mind, um, that your story creates a legacy that'll it'll prompt you to do something decent you know what I mean mm -hmm, yes yeah. yeah well and people write for different reasons I mean there are some people who I had an uncle who wrote a book about our family just for the family um, but in a way it is his legacy because he wrote it and we all know he wrote it and he went to a, a great deal of diff deal of difficulty writing that book you know he traveled for 10 years researching our family so so yeah. it is your legacy yeah, so. in a way it's, that's quite a legacy to leave isn't it it's like a memoir or an autobiography um but that's of really of great interest to the whole of the family because it gives people part of their identity doesn't it yeah mm -hmm. mm. but what about people so like stephen king beg your pardon what about people like stephen king who writes scary stuff that's right. Yeah, I I don't know. I I can't read scary stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but it is his legacy. I mean, if you think about it, you know, he is a profound writer. I mean, he really, yes. you know, he's accomplished quite a bit. That is his legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, his accomplishments. Exactly. You know, so exactly. it doesn't matter what you write. Um, no, no. No, it's irrelevant. And it's just really figuring out what it is for you. And and I have on my website, I, there's free tutorials. And one of them is um, how to be successful. And it sort of is like a step-by-step -step guide trying to figure out what you're all about. You know, wh why are you doing what you're doing? And, and it's actually quite easy. The steps go like, one, it's um, one. I say write your own eulogy because that gives you a sense. Okay, my life is finished now. What did I do? And then there's probably going to be a wake-up call there that you go, Oh no, that's not good enough. I want to do this or that. If you don't think that, if you think oh, I've done well, that's great. You know, open mm -hmm. a, a bottle of bubbly and and celebrate. Mm -hmm. But if you think, if you think no, I could have done better, then just write down what you would like to achieve. Don't worry about how. Just write down what you would like to achieve and another mm. thing is if you think back to when you were very very little a lot of people will tell you they say oh I used to love dancing or I used to love writing like I used to from a very early age always like writing other people say I would draw or I would you know most of us I don't know if you feel that but when you look back to when you were very very small we did something spontaneously and then school and work and all that gets in the way 
Mm -hmm. Um, But most of us were born with something special to do. And then the other thing I said, and if you're more like midlife, so so first we looked at the end of your life, writing your eulogy. Then we went all the way back to the beginning, then you were very little. And then I say, thirdly, look at where you are now. And what is right in your face? What is it that you find really challenging? What is it that only you can do? And most of us have in our life, you know, like I'm the only mother of my children. Right. So yeah. that, that places me yeah. in a unique position to give my feedback and my input in their lives. I'm the only godmother of my godchild. And and so for most of us, and, and most of us find that also one of the most challenging things to do. You know, we go, no, I'd rather take a part-time job and, and, you know, do that than pick up the kids from school or do this or that. But So what is it that we are placed uniquely to do in life? What is it that no one else can do, just us? Because that's likely to be part of why you're on this planet. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And sometimes we don't always know that. It's kind of interesting what you said about how you, if you write your, your eulogy, it gives you an idea of what you need to accomplish or need to set out to further accomplish um, hmm. if that's what you want your legacy to be. Because we oftentimes we don't stop to think about that. No. No. In fact, no, most people don't. Did. Right. No, um, no, I never I, did. Well, I have. I have to say, I have often thought about, <laughs> but I've had a lot of surgeries too. But I, <laughs> I've often thought about, you know, well, so what's going to happen, you know, and who's going to think of me? You know, we just, it's just mm. a human thing to do sure. that when you're yeah. in a mm. tragic situation. Mm. So, well, this is, mm, yeah, go ahead. This is the thing, James. Um, all of us live forever. It doesn't matter if you're religious or not. You know, I believe right. there's a, a real afterlife. But even if you don't believe in a real afterlife, we'll live forever in the minds of the people Absolutely. that know us and that love us. That's right. And so how are you going to leave those thoughts? Because to some extent, you know, it, it depends on you, doesn't it, how they think about you. Right. And no one can say it doesn't matter because if it didn't matter, why would you even try to accomplish anything in life anyway? Exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. So, and, and uh, I, to be honest, I never gave it any thought at all till I had my near-death experience. And then all of a sudden it became very important. And and also I, I started to think, how much time do I have left? I never used to think that. You know, right. I just was, yeah, I would live forever like everyone else. And all of a sudden I thought, well, probably not on this planet anyway. <laughs> right. And uh, yes. And At my age, I think that now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then there is, well, you get a little urgency with that, don't you? It's not like, oh, I can do it tomorrow. No, you think, no, I better do it now. Yeah. Because if not now, then when? Yeah. Yes. We're all I limited like to that. life on this planet, that's for sure. There is a time limit. So. That's right. But uh, there's something really nice about that because it gives a vibrancy to your life. Mm-hmm. And it gives, you know, in my world anyway, it gives a vibrancy and an enthusiasm. As in, okay, I'm here, I've got a task to do, and, and you know, and do it to the best of your ability, and it makes it way more fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. I was sick uh, so that, last December and spent a week in the hospital, and the biggest thought on my mind was, oh, thank God my daughter can go into my underwear drawer and bring me clean underwear. <laughs> 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 you know, she's... <laughs> <laughs> it's awful. <laughs> it is. That's what you're thinking is, oh, God, I'm so glad that nobody else has to go in there. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's funny how we never think of those things until we're in a situation. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. yeah. And then, and no, then my, right. mm. my thinking was, get organized when I get out of here because we can't have this again. <laughs> and then you never do get organized. <laughs> no, it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, my life is a little tidier. I'm not saying it's tidy, but mm. no, and and it is a little more more organized. And it's not totally organized, but it's better. Yeah. And and so that came about because of that. And that was also when I wrote the Holy Grail. What happened with that one was that um, people again kept asking Mimi, "How did you publish those books?" And I thought, you know what, there was a lot of overwhelm when I published the books. And even though I had um, a, a good amount of backup and support from the people that were teaching me, there were still little gaps and there was also, I couldn't remember it all. Do you know what I mean? And I thought if I make it very methodical 
and organized so that anyone, even someone who has never ever published, that they can follow it step by step. This is what I did, step one. Mm -hmm. Because that's all I wanted. And someone says that there's a writer and he said, write the book that you want to see published, you know, if it doesn't exist. And that's what I did with the Holy Grail. I thought, well... I looked on the internet, I thought, I want someone to hold my hand as I publish, because I find this really hard. As you well know, if you have published a book yourself, there's so much to, to juggle at the same mm, time. Absolutely. And, and, and to keep it in my I can only hold a few thoughts at once. You know, I can't hold like 10 thoughts at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's and most so of I our really, case. Yes, so I needed a schedule, and so I made... I made a launch plan, step by step, you know, this is what you do to launch your book. You book the promos, you make sure, you know, the formatting is in place, you make sure it's being proofread, you make sure you've had your beta readers, um, and, and just went through all the steps, you know, what you need to do. And then there's a the marketing plan, like, okay, go and post on all your social media. Did I post on Twitter? Tick. Did I post on... Uh, Google Plus tick, you know, Facebook tick. And then I found a way how you can post to all of them in one go. You can post to like seven, eight places in, in one go with the click of a mouse. And I thought, okay, I'll do a little tutorial on that. Uh -huh. I remember how to do that. And I, I, I did a lot of tutorials just to, to remember myself, you see. It was a little bit selfish, really, because I said, hey, guys, I do this for you. But it was just so that I would remember it all. And then, so I had all these schedules, a marketing plan, a social media plan, a launch plan, and you lay them all alongside each other, and it starts to make sense, and it falls into place. And that's how they launch successfully, and that's how they sold well, and that's, so, yeah, that was really good. But it, I could never, ever have done it without all the support of the school that taught me the the people that supported me, my fellow students, you know, just all the people that helped me. Because on your own as an author, you can put your book out there, but if no one reads it, who cares? Right. right. And I think that's the thing that's the hardest thing for people to understand. It's very difficult to do anything by yourself. Exactly. Um, you know, exactly. It's, it's really difficult. And so sometimes you can't be afraid to let people help you. I'm that way. I have a hard time letting people help me. I feel like, oh, I owe you for this. And, yeah, yes. you know, but it, it is very difficult. I mean, I can tell you. Uh, uh, Jan okay. can tell you. Yes. It's very difficult he, for me. He doesn't take help well. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I was very much like you, James. I thought, you know, I, I can do all this on my own. And then I discovered the joy of doing it with other people. And this is what I tell people with social media, for instance. Social media is just like ordinary life. And when we moved to this neighborhood, that very same day I ruptured my appendix. So I didn't get to meet any of my neighbors. I laid in bed for a whole year. I couldn't get up. I was that ill. Um, then I only stayed in home. I couldn't get out of, out of the house. But what happened around us, houses, new houses were being built. And I said to my girls, I said, go and bake some muffins and share it with the new neighbors and say if they want to come over for lunch or whatever, they're very welcome. And so slowly over the years, we got to know all our neighbors and, you know, got to hang out, you know, at birthdays and stuff like that and go out together every now and then. And that's social media for you. People tend to say, hey, I publish a book, read my book. But that's not how it works. Right. You mm -hmm. see that someone else has published the book, and you say, "Hey, what did you publish? Wow, I like that. Can I read that? You know, can I share that with my friends?" And that's how you build community. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened for me. That's what we do on this show. Exactly right. I absolutely love your show. Thank I you. I think it is. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's so non-commercial. It's so organic. Yes. It's just really, truly people sharing with each other what they know and that's what I'm all about I really because I know you can make a lot of money saying to people people ask me all the time Mimi can you launch my book for me but in reality you have to charge like two or four thousand dollars to help someone do that because that's how much time it takes right yes to launch a book yeah and I I I can't charge people that. In my world, that is a massive amount of money. You know, there's a uh, fine line there, too, uh, 
Mimi, because it, in my case, I've always helped people. But it does reach mm-hmm. a point to where you realize your time is valuable. And, yes. you know, I haven't yet, but I think I'm at a point in life where I love doing this radio show and I don't charge anyone ever to be on my show mm-hmm. and never will. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But and I don't fault anyone that does. I'm just saying I won't. Um, mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the thing is, is, is that there are times when you, you're doing things like you said, when you're taking time out of your life to help someone launch a book or write a book mm. or format, you know, it, it kind of reaches a point where you either have to start charging. Yes. Or, or start saying no. No, because you're, you're avoiding your own work. You're avoiding <coughs> your accomplishments. No, 100%. And so you're probably at a point where I was last year. And that's, I'm sort of on a sabbatical at, at the moment because... What happened to me was uh, I was so isolated for so long mm-hmm. that when I started to write a book and become part of the book writing community, I was so grateful that people were interested to read what I was writing that in turn I was so happy to help everyone out. And every day I'd have like three or four messages in my inbox with people with questions, but maybe how did you do this and how did you do that? And I thought, well, I'm just answering messages all day. I don't get to write and I love writing. And that's how the first book came about, Mimi's book launch plan. And I thought, well, there, now you have all the info. But they weren't happy that I kept asking. So then I wrote Mimi's book launch plan. I said, there, now you've got 360 pages worth. This will do. <laughs> people are still asking, you see. But and you so know what you did? Them. What you did is you know, great if you think about it. Because we just got through saying that we don't have time to continue to help people for free. But at the same mm-hmm. time, you would have to charge, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars to help them otherwise. Mm-hmm. But by writing this book, you've actually helped yourself as well as the others because now, because I'm looking at your your um, um, table of contents here, and you've kind of laid it out to where it is a simple plan to follow. So you've made it easy for them by just getting your book. It's not costing them two thousand dollars, <laughs> you know. And at the same time, it's freeing up your time as well. Exactly, and that was the whole idea. And so what I do now, when pe- because I still get people asking, and so what I do now, I say, look, there's free tutorials on my website. Soon I'll have a toolbox, and that'll have you know all the minimum tools, that, and that's for free too, at least at the moment. I'm not charging for that. And I say, and if you really, really want my help, then I'm listed on some site. I think it's called Clarity. And I'll do coaching there, and right. it's one or two dollars, I'm not quite sure, per minute. And then people can just, for 15 minutes, they can say, Mimi, I'm stuck. I don't know what to, and that's where I love to help people. Mm-hmm. I can't help people, you know, like, oh, do this and that, that for free, because it meant for two years that I couldn't myself concentrate on the writing. Right, you accomplished nothing because you were helping someone else. That's exactly right. But if someone wants to talk to me for 50 minutes, half an hour, an hour, I can do that. I can fit that in and troubleshoot. I'm very good at troubleshooting. You say, look, I'm stuck here. I don't know how to market. How do I market? I go boom, 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 boom. Do that. If it doesn't work, get back to me. You know, I don't know how to launch a book. How do I launch a book? Boom, 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 boom. Like that. Get back to me. I don't want to charge stacks of money because I myself didn't have much money. So if... You know, if it's only for the rich to publish, that wouldn't be fun. I want it to be fun for everyone. Right. I pretty much published, you know, on a shoestring. It didn't cost me much at all. And so I don't want other people to fork out lots of money either. I mean, if you want to, there's companies, they charge $20,000 to, to publish a book. If you have that kind of money, right. there's nothing wrong with that. But, most yeah, but today stuff. you don't need to do that, though. No. <coughs> there was a time no. when you wouldn't no. have to, but to, in today's market, the, probably the biggest expense you should even have is editing. Beyond that, it's so much so easy to publish a book out there. And even like you That's said, right. even to launch a book, just learning a book like you wrote, just the tools there, all you need in your hands is the tools on how to do it yourself. That's exactly right. All the tools. You know, you may you may want to spend a little money for a cover, but you can even do it yourself. You know, if you have that artistic flair you enjoy, you can do it yourself. Or you could pay a little for a cover. The proofreading, you probably want to pay for that. The formatting, you can do it yourself. Um, there, there's some cost but it's not massive right the promotion is is probably the largest cost right. and, and as i write in my book you know because i go oh promoting you know really do i have to promote but if you look at any of the big supermarkets here in australia we have like Woolworths and Coles. 
and they spend millions and millions and millions of dollars on promoting their groceries. And you go, everyone needs to buy groceries. Yeah, Why absolutely. But they do. So that is, you know, if you want your book to be in the public eye, unless, you know, one, once in a blue moon, someone, you know, gets lucky and a book gets promoted and they don't have to make an effort. But as a rule, you have to, you know, you can go blogging, you can talk to other bloggers and you say, hey, can I write a guest post on your blog and, you know, mention my book or something like that. Mm-hmm. There's a whole host of ways that you can promote your book for Wait, free. And you know Pat Ritter, I think, or you know of Pat Ritter. Yes. And yes. Pat does his one page a day, he posts in the morning, so you yes. can read his the next page of his book. Yes, very clever. And a lot of people very ask clever. me that I deal with here in, in the States, they ask me, well, why would he do that? Because he's giving them their book. All they have to do is just save that page. And I said, but not really, because what it does for him is he gets feedback. It gives him an idea on, it helps in many ways. One, if there's an error, someone's going to point it out, so he'll get to correct yes. that. Uh, mm-hmm. Two, if there's grammatical errors, they're going to point it out. So I said, it's a yes. tool in which you can use that benefits the writing of the book. And mm-hmm. when it's finished, everybody always wants a copy. Mm. Mm. That's right, people would. And it's interesting because I listened to that interview and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I started my blog exactly the same way. I started a, b- a blog, Live Forever How To, and it was exactly the same way, like, oh, this is a page of my book. This is the next page. Oh, this yeah. is the next page. Mm. Yes, I did. Um, but I never told anyone about it. It was just for me to stay focused and and to do that. You know, I did it every week, not every day. Every day would be a bit of a push for me. Yeah. You know what I liked what he did is he, like you're talking about, is self-promoted. It was a self-promotion in the sense that it, it, it took on its own following because he That's said he right. started off with two people and then yeah. someone must have read it on their Facebook or whatever, and then and and yeah. it's still happening for him. I mean, he's got. I think yeah. he said he had over over nine thousand people who take wow. his blog, you know, every wow. morning. So it's amazing how one little seed can really grow. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is, and and in some way also that is a bit like baking muffins. Like he's sharing of himself, isn't mm-hmm. he? It's yes. Not He's not asking people, he's just saying, look, this is what I'm doing. Do you like it? And people either like it or they don't. It's sort of a two-way street, isn't it? And he really likes what he does as well. He really loves it. Yes. So, And I think that's another thing. You have to have the passion um, behind exactly it. Right. Yes. Hmm. But that indeed, and again, that's a nice legacy to leave, isn't it? That yes. He's got all these readers, and he enjoys doing it, and he has so much passion and heart for it. And, and I think and that's... You see, if, if there's anything that I would like to accomplish, it's just to make people aware of that. Hey, when you're living your life, you're actually leaving a legacy. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I think if we wake up every morning like that, you're leaving a legacy, then maybe we wouldn't say certain things or do certain things um, and concentrate on other things. That That's what it does for me anyway. Hey, I'm leaving a legacy here. I'm not just living a life and then boom, it's over. I'm yeah. writing something behind. Uh, my problem is I can never remember what my legacy is. <laughs> I'm all, you know, I'm always forgetting what did I do. I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, I lately have had to remind him of numerous projects that he has completed and done things for other people. Uh, yeah, I don't even think about it. So you know, maybe we're, we're maybe sometimes we're we're leaving a leg- legacy that we don't even know about. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, probably, I, but it's not a bad idea. And a lot of entrepreneurs do this. They they sit on it for a little bit and they go, what what you know, what would I like to leave? And they write it on a sticky note or something and stick it to their computer. And so every time I, they walk up to the computer, and they go, okay, I want to set the best possible example for my children. You know, and that's yeah. it. As simple as that. Mm. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, and then when that sticky note falls down, they forget what they were all about, and then <laughs> they write another one. But it helps to have that focus. Yes. Yes. Mm. I'm one of those. I have to have notes somewhere, um, and then yeah. I usually misplace those. But, you know, the point <laughs> is I, I usually need uh-huh. something to remind me of what I need to be doing or what, what I need to accomplish yeah. today. Problem mm. is there's not enough time in the, in the day sometimes. So. 
<laughs> no, exactly right. But yeah, so so for me, I just got that awareness because I wasn't well, and then yeah, you start to ponder. <laughs> well, when you were ill, life. I'm just curious. When you were ill, were you writing while you were ill? No, I had been writing before then. I wasn't actually able to do a lot of writing when I was ill. I literally couldn't. I couldn't even stand a computer screen. Um, but as I started to get better, I, I started to write. And I had a lot of notes from prior. So when I said, you know, I wrote all these books in those years, some of those notes had already been around. Mm -hmm. But obviously not, obviously not about the book publishing because I'd never done that before. Um, so that, that was all new. But like my story of survival, I already had those notes somewhere. Um, yeah, so I wrote some, but not. But I write very, very quick. There's people, they write a book in a weekend. Right. We had someone on our show who in five years wrote 51 books. 53. 53. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. And, and I, I'm a bit similar in that I can write very, very fast. Wow. Some people, yeah, some people take a long time to write a book. I have a That's friend me. and what she does, she, um, she does, gives lectures. And as she gives the lecture, she records it for two hours. And then she sends it away to be transcribed. And there's a book. Huh. That yeah. is interesting. So that is another way. But you see, there's people, they do whole courses on that. They say, okay, how to write a book in two hours. But it's as simple as that. If, if you're that person, you know, if you're not a speaker, that probably wouldn't work for you. Right. Um, yeah, but like you said, you had someone on the show that did 51 books in a year. That's crazy. No, five years, yeah. five years. Five years. Five years. Five that was her goal, was to write 50 books within five years, and she... Yeah actually right. surpassed that. Right. Yes. So. That's the call. There, there's also, um, and I bought one of those software uh, programs, where you can write your blog and you can turn your blog posts or certain of these blog posts into a book. Huh. Um, I, I have try, tried it, but I haven't really persevered with it because there was a few hiccups there. So you write your blog post, and that's like Pat Ritter, he's probably aware of this, is you write your blog post and you stick all the pages in this software program and Voila, there's your book. Huh. I'll be darned. That's fantastic. Great idea. Yeah, yeah. so there's, there's all sorts of tricks of the trade. People keep telling me that I should go and use Scrivener. I don't know if you heard of Scrivener. No. No? Well, I think I've heard of Scrivener, yeah. Yeah, Scrivener is a, is a book writing tool. It's a software program. You start writing. It saves as you write. That's why I write in Google Docs because you can. Google Docs saves as right. you write, right. so right. you don't you don't ever lose your file anymore. Plus, it mm. is hosted on the web, so it's not you know even if your computer um, were to fall over today, then it's still all there. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing it's in the cloud about Google, two people can work on it at the same time, so both my daughter and myself could be making changes in the file <coughs> at the same time online. Oh. I love Google Docs. Yeah, but I got totally sidetracked here because people keep telling me to use Scrivener. But Scrivener has a really steep learning curve. And I don't sort of, sort of always want to take the time to do that. So I'm still using Google Docs, which I think is really, really good. I like it. Hmm. I don't think I've ever used Google Docs, ever. No. I, I, I would, because what used to happen with me with Word, you know, all of a sudden your computer, someone turns off the power or whatever, and your file is gone, and you're looking for it, and you don't know what's your latest file, and stuff like that. And I would have that quite a bit. And with Google Docs, they save online, which I thought, oh, the security of it. But, um, you know, I grew out of those concerns. I, I liked convenience. And, and you open a doc, you sign up with Google, you open a doc, you start writing, and every letter as you type it gets saved. Now, and is it saved just the on the computer, or is it saved, like Jan was saying, in the cloud? No, this is the good thing. If I now go to my laptop, I close my computer, I go to my laptop, I open up Google Doc, I can continue writing on my laptop. <gasps> Great. Yeah. Yes, and even if my file is still open on the computer, it doesn't matter. Oh because my goodness! It'll sink. It'll sink. Yeah. How wow. good is that? Wow, that's fabulous. Isn't that brilliant. Yes. Yeah, that is that is brilliant. And, and and with one click of the mouse, I can I can share it, and I share it with my daughter, and I said, "Oh, could you please format this for me?" And then she'll format it, and and she'll put it in Word form, and and that's it, and it gets published. It's br I love Google Docs. Oh, okay. I think I can feel a tutorial on Google Docs coming on here. 
<laughs> it's really yeah. good Google Docs. It's lovely. You, you actually don't need a tutorial. It's that easy. It's wow. that easy. Well, that's something to do this evening. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My next book. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's very easy. It's very simple. You don't have all the all the other bits and pieces that you get with Word, but you. As a writer, I don't need that. I just need to be able to put my thoughts onto paper. And all the formatting and everything comes later. Speaking mm. of your legacy, I, I, I'm just curious because uh, I always say I'm just curious. That's one of my favorite yeah, things to say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, when in, in the writing community there, do you guys associate as far as personally know each other or... In, in Australia, I'm talking about, obviously. And I know no, it's a vast no, country, I, but I mean, as far as like, you know, are you, you're closer to Sydney, is that correct? Um, I'm, no, I'm far away from Oh, you're Sydney. far away I'm from Sydney. to Brisbane. Oh, about Brisbane. About five hours. Okay, five and there's a pretty good writing community there in Brisbane. Yeah, but I still don't travel very well, so I don't actually get to drive places. Um, there was a local community there were two other girls they were also part of a writing group and we met a couple of times but what happened was they're non-fiction writers no I'm non-fiction and they're fiction writers and it's a different flavor altogether and which is yeah so sort of didn't keep going for that reason in my town there is a writing group um, but I haven't been able to get out much so I haven't yeah. mm -hmm. all my writing buddies are online and I suppose yeah. the real the reason why I probably I, I'm probably looking at this from a different angle and that I can see now where maybe a lot of authors don't know each other for me it seems like we all know each other but that's because they are on the show but right <laughs> right I Never. just realized that that's the yeah. reason you know them you knucklehead yeah is <laughs> yeah if she'd start her own show then yeah. she would know all these authors personally as well <laughs> all right, never mind. <laughs> it's online. It's, my community is mainly online, but actually I wanted to get out and talk to people, so I did give a talk at the local library, and the local writers group indicated they would like me to talk there. So I will get out more, which I think that's the real life for you, isn't it? Yeah. My, my, yeah. my writing group online, it's, that's my real life at the moment. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and there is many, there are many, you know, all you have to do is, is Google for writing groups and it, there's plenty there. It's just finding the one that resonates with you. So do you do book signings? Um, like if I do, I do book signing? Yes. Uh -huh. I've had people ask to, um, to write a little thing in the book and send it away, but I haven't been out myself because I really haven't been well enough as yet to do that. Right, yeah. The people in Australia do do that. They go to the local bookshop, library, um, and, and launch a book that way. But I've, I was taught to launch online. And the way you launch online is you get a group of people which you call your launch party. And that could be anyone. You, you go through your emails and you find, you know, your mother, your sister, your brother, the people of your, you know, choir your yoga club, all them, and you say, hey guys, I'm launching a book. Are you interested to be part of it in, in some way? And then you go to Facebook groups and all that, and, and you just ask people, you say, this is what I'm doing, I'm launching this book, would you be interested? Well, at the moment I've got like 300 people on my launch team, but they're not all active. Um, mm. because I'm not launching at the moment. Right. But when I'm launching, then I ask and say, hey, I'm launching this kind of book. Are you interested in helping or being part of it? And most people like it because when you're part of someone who's launching, if that person knows what they're doing and you're part of it, you, s you know what to do for your next book yourself. You yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've always done. Every time I launch a book, I go... Guess what? This time I used these promo sites. I did a guest blog for these people. I, you know, and there's all these bits and pieces. Um, I wrote a piece for, you know, this article, da da da. And then people go, oh, that's interesting. And they can copy what you do with their book. Mm -hmm. And that's generally about people. But sometimes people really want to be part of it because they like the content of the book or because they just like you as a person or as a writer, there's all different reasons. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and 
the interesting part is with the launch party, not everyone does the same thing. Some people say, look, I can only just post it on my Facebook and share. Is that all right? And you go, sure. And other people say, oh, I'd love to read it and give you feedback. And you go, yeah, lovely. <coughs> and other people will say, um, you know, can I, can I help you with the cover? You know, it all depends whatever people's talents are. And you just say yes, yes, yes to whatever is on offer. And then what I always do after that, I share how it went, what I did, the results, and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. And so my, my launch party is called um, This Is Fun. Mimi's launch party. Ah. And I started writing. Yeah, I went, oh, man, this is so much fun. <laughs> 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 and so it's still called that. This is fun, Mimi's launch party, because I still think it's, and I think if it's no fun, don't do it. Don't go there. You know, if I learned anything in my life because I got sick, because I burnt out and I go from now on, if it isn't fun, I'm not doing it. Yeah. And I, that is, you know, I think I've reached a point in my life. And I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, sometimes doing the radio, because I do a lot of booking and we're getting ready to launch mm. two new shows this, mm. the first of September. So it's a lot of work and, and, you know, and then I step back and I think, but I enjoy doing it, so yeah. it's not yeah. the same as a real job, because I, right. you know, so I remind myself, this is fun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it is work, and, but and it's fun. To, yeah, and then you have to set it up so that it is fun, and that's why I have all my templates and all that, so there's no stress. If there's stress involved, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. I think stress is not good for anyone, and I think you're your, your show is a lot of fun. I love Oh, thank you. And I hope you don't take offense when I say it's organic because... No, it is. But that is, you know, non-commercial, just real people yeah. talking about, you know, their writing adventures. And I think it's a lot of fun to you, be part of it and to listen to your shows. I really enjoy it. We just had a young man. I say young man. He's six years younger than me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I've known him for about, I guess, 16, 17 years, maybe longer. And he didn't realize I was doing this show, and so he was on because he just wrote a book. And we were, he was talking about, after it was over, he said, James, this was fun. And yeah. I went, what did you, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, work. <laughs> and it's been 20 years that you've known him. Yeah, I guess it has been 20 years. 20 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and that's, I, I, I think that any time we approach something, and it, you said it a while ago, you have to have fun with it. Um, what's the point in doing it if you're not having fun with it? Um, and yeah, I and when exactly. I did the show, when I came back to redo the show, because I was on a, a local network for four and a half years, I thought if I'm going to produce this show myself, I, I want it to be fun. I, I don't want it to be complicated and, you know, mm, too. Yeah. Like, I always tell my audience the truth. Like, we were late getting on today with you, with this show. Mm. But, you know, mm. it works out. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and when you're having fun, it always works out. And learning yeah. stuff always makes it fun. Yeah. yeah. And I learn yeah, something from every author I ever have on. I always learn something. Yeah. Look what we've learned today. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> All this stuff he's scribbling down, hey. Oh yeah. When you yeah. when you're when you're talking, I'm writing. <laughs> yeah. And sweet potatoes. <laughs> uh, I I had a brother who was very, very sick and sweet potatoes kept him alive for about five years. So I'm telling you that you are right about that. That is a top food there group. You go. Yep. There you go. I didn't know that. I didn't know that, but it's true. Yes. We don't need these complex diets. No. no. Yeah. No, we don't. And this is, you see, this is what I find often in life that people think, well, if you do this diet, if you do, and they make it so hard and they make it so expensive. And I go, no, no, no. Life isn't supposed to be like that. Yeah. It's supposed to be easy and fun. You know, I'm not saying that all of us have fun all the time, but. If you can do something and, and enjoy it, then you'd be stupid not to. Obviously. Yeah. You know, it does take a lot of time to figure out what it is, though, because we go through life and we, we have to have a job. We have to make a living. We often take jobs we really mm. don't want. Mm. Um, mm. And sometimes we take a job we don't want because it pays good money. And we're thinking, well, the yeah. money is the end all, which it right. does. The, the money know. will make you happy. Yeah. Not. But it doesn't. And yeah, so I think as we get older, we realize, you know, it is important to have a decent living, but it's more important to just live within your means and have fun. Mm. So that's mm. what I do. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can combine it, even better, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's not how much money you make. It's how much uh, it's it's what you do with it once you get it. 
That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah that's exactly right. Yeah, well, I was reading a blog post um, the other day, and this is a, a man in Poland, and he is actually trying to switch over from his regular job to full-time book writing. And it was really interesting, his blog post, because he wrote down every penny that he earned from his book writing and he said uh, he got so much from Amazon, he got so much from Kobo, he got so much from Smashwords, uh -huh. then he got so much from affiliates and so he wrote it all down and it came to something like $7,000 a month and wow. this was after two years or something of book writing but then he wrote down what he spent, right? And he spent right. so much on proofreading and so much on promotion and so much and he was left with something like nearly four thousand dollars which is a good amount of money yeah mm -hmm. and so he said to his wife he said I want to quit working and do this full-time but she wasn't that happy she goes no 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 keep your job still for a bit longer which wasn't a full-time job and he said okay I'll keep it a bit longer because it makes her happier but so clearly he's very deliberately working on switching over to do what he loves doing and I loved how he so freely shared how much he was making and how much it was costing him. And it put perspective for me too, because I just think if it isn't fun, I'm not doing it. I don't even think about the money. I'm in that position because I'm sort of semi-retired anyway. I'm not really doing, you know, that's not the issue. And, and it makes it very easy then yeah. Yes. To, yeah, to, to focus on you know what's good in your life and what's fun but you know Mimi also authors can make it to where they can make a little money and have fun with what they're doing um, we have people who do what, what's called the coffee house tour and they literally go around to all the coffee houses every weekend and they do their book signings there and they sell a few books and it keeps them going so you can really have fun at this without looking at the millions I'm going to sell just look at what can I sell this weekend yeah yes what is a coffee house, James? Coffee house? Like we have, I don't know if you have Starbucks there or not, but we have like Starbucks or it's it's a coffee house where people go and have coffee. Oh, uh, it's a huge thing house. in the United I States. You said coffee, coffee. No, no, coffee, coffee. House. coffee. Yes, yes, yes. And that's allowed. They are allowed to go there. Yes, that. they set it up with, with, it's not always just a coffee house. It can be a little bistro or a restaurant. They still call it the coffee house tour, but they may be in a bistro or something. Okay. I d I've never seen that in Australia, but I could start it, couldn't I? Yes, yes you, you could. could. <laughs> I could start it. Look, I'm, I'm always saying, if you have a really lavish lifestyle and you want a simpler life, then you should consider becoming an author. Yeah. Well, That's Mimi, I hate to tell you this, but we're running out of time. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> Mimi, where can we learn more about your, your books and your work? Okay, if you go to Mimi Emmanuel, that is E M M A N U E L dot com, um, that has pretty much all the info you would want. Uh, it has free tutorials on there, and uh, there's a link to my Amazon page. Um, right at the very bottom, there's a little uh, avatar, and if you click on it, you can actually contact me if you get stuck. You know, if you're launching a book and you go, oh, I don't know how to do this, or you can click on that and contact me that way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. Well, we'd like to thank our guest, Mimi Emanuel, along with my um, co-host, Janet Corsi. And you can find links to our, our show at aspectsofwriting.com. That's aspectsofwriting.com. There you'll also see the videos of our past show, and we have an archive of all the past shows on the archive tab. You can also find links to iHeartRadio, iTunes, amfm247.com, which is where this show airs every Saturday at we're also on Roku TV. Um, we have several, we have like 14 terrestrial stations. And we're also on Blog Talk Radio now. Like I said, we archive all of our shows on Aspects of Writing. So just go to aspectsofwriting.com and click on the archive tab. And so until next week, this is your host, James Kelly, reminding you, if you can dream it, you can write it. Thank you again, Mimi. Great this show. This was awesome. Thank you, James. Thank you. Thank you.